Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to learn how to find the volume of rectangular prisms. Let's get started. Before we get to this example, let's talk about what exactly volume is. The volume of a solid measures the amount of space it occupies. Another word for that is its capacity. Okay? That's what volume is. Okay? Instead of surface area where you're going around the outside, right? the faces, the area of all the faces, now we're talking about the inside, how much space it occupies. You see volume all the time. When you go to the grocery store and you buy a Coke, you see maybe it's a, a liter bottle of Coke. That's how much, that's the capacity, that's how much Coke is in that bottle. That's volume. Or you buy a gallon of milk, right? A gallon, that's the volume of milk in that bottle. Um, when you have things that are small, it can be very easy to measure volume, right? If you're, if you're cooking, using something like a measuring cup, right? With your recipe. Well, you're measuring volume, how much milk you might need for, to make some cookies or something. And if it's liquid, it's, it's quite easy to measure volume. But when we have something that's solid where we couldn't just pour it in here and figure out how much is in there, it's more difficult. Or if you have something like a swimming pool, it would be take a really long time to just do this with all the water and figure out the volume of that swimming pool. So instead, we have formulas that we can use to find the volume of things like that. So we're not gonna use this today. Uh, Let's get to our first example and figure out how we can use math to find volume. Okay, example one, find the volume of the prism. Now first, this is a rectangular prism. And with a rectangular prism or a square prism, there's two formulas that we can use uh, to find the volume of this. First one you may be familiar with, and that's just volume equals length times width times height. Okay, so length here, times the width, how deep it goes back, times the height, right? That will give you the volume. Uh, your units are always going to be cubic units. Remember, because this is three-dimensional, and we're doing meters times meters times meters. So at the very end, I just got to remember, I'm going to have meters cubed, okay? Um, but if we think about this, this first part, length times width, well, that's going to give us the area of our base which is right here. So the other, and then we're timesing it by the height. Basically how, how much, you can think of it, when you find that area of that base, you times it by the height, so it's like you're raising that up, you're stretching that out and filling that space, um, and that will give you that volume. So the other formula that I'm gonna show you is volume equals area of the base, which we use a capital B to represent that, times the height, okay? That's another formula, and the nice thing about this, so area of the base, okay? Area of the base. These both would work for this, because basically when you do length times width, that is the area of the base, right? And then you're times it by height. The nice thing about this is that, I'm going to put a star next to this, is that it will work for any prisms. If you have a triangular prism, you find the area of the base, that area of that triangle, times it by the height. If you have a pentagonal prism, find the area of that pentagon, and then multiply it by the height. Even cylinders, when you get to cylinders, you find the area of that circle, that base circle, times it by the height, and that will give you the volume. So that's a really useful, um, really useful formula because it, it can work for so many different types of, of solids, whereas this only is going to work for rectangular or uh, a square prism, okay? Um, so just make sure you, you know both of those. Uh, we're only going to be dealing with uh, rectangular prisms in this lesson, so it's, it's not a big deal to, to worry about that. Anyways, let's solve for volume. So let's go ahead. Length times width. Uh, times height, so volume is going to be 7 eighths times 1 half times the height, which is 5 
8. Anytime I'm multiplying fractions, I'm always hoping and trying to simplify first. Unfortunately, here, there's nothing that I can simplify. Uh, so I'm just multiplying straight across. 7 times 1 is 7 times 5 is 35. Uh, I'm sorry. That's supposed to be 1 half. My fault. 1 half. Okay. I'm going to do 8 times 8. That's 64 times 2 is 128. And then if you remember the thing you got to remember, units at the very end, meters times meters times meters will give me meters cubed. And you show that with a little three up, up there, okay, instead of squared, right? So final answer, 35 over 128 meters cubed. Here's something to try on your own. All right, here's our last example. Find the height. So they give us a rectangular prism. They tell us the volume already. The volume is 1,792 inches cubed or uh, cubic inches. But they want us to find the height. We don't know the height. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an equation and uh, solve for h, solve for height. So we know that the formula is length times width times height will give us the volume. Right? Volume equals length times width times height. Now let's substitute in the things we know. Well, we know the volume. So that's 1,792. We know the length, 7 inches. We know the width, 16 inches. We don't know the height. That's our unknown. Uh, so here's our equation. We're going to solve for h. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify it a little. So 1,792, 7 times 16, well, that's 71, 12, whoops, 112 times h, 112h. Hopefully, you remember a little bit of algebra, solving a one-step equation. Uh, this is 112 times h, so to undo that multiplication, I need to divide both sides by 112. Keep that equation balanced. Uh, that becomes 1 and goes away. So I get h is equal to, well, let's see. Um, I'll go ahead. I've got room over here. I'm not really sure, so let's do some division. 792, 112. Can you see that? Yes. 112 into that goes once. 112 subtract. I get 7, 6. Bring down the 2. 112 into that, let's try 6 times. 6 times that is 12, carry the 1, 6, 7, 6, perfect. Okay, so H is 16. Now i got to remember my units. These were all inches, so final answer, the height is equal to 16 inches. Not inches cubed, remember that was for the volume. This is just height, so 16 inches. Here's some more to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.